Office of the Committee on Academic Misconduct, which is a, a faculty and student run committee. Uh, it's a standing committee of the University Senate. And uh, we have a mission, and that is to uphold one rule in the entire code of student conduct. One rule, one sentence. There are 32 members, 18 faculty and 14 student members. And uh, as I said, uh, sometimes uh, people think that we're here to get people in trouble, that we want to kick people out of school. That couldn't be farther from the truth. What we're here to do is to protect the academic integrity of our university. And that's what our one rule from the Code of Student Conduct says. Prohibited at Ohio State is any activity that tends to compromise the academic integrity of our university or subvert the educational process. And then there's like 10 or 11 examples so that students can concretely see kind of what it looks like if academic misconduct occurs. Now, students come in to my office, I talk to each one, and for the past three years, I've probably talked to 1,500 of them. So I get a pretty good idea of what they're thinking about and what happens, how things happen in the classroom. And when I talk to them about the academic integrity of the university, I read that sentence to them and I say, well, what does that mean? A large number of them cannot tell me. And they say, well, it means that I don't plagiarize my paper, or what I don't do. But to have them think about it inside out, or take the institutional perspective, what is it that we're protecting? What is it that we value here? And that is, we want to guarantee that students who earn a degree at this university have earned it, fair and square. They have the skill, they have the knowledge, that possessing that degree or having that good grade in the course implies that they possess. Now, we send out students who have grades that they really didn't earn, and students, they're sort of motivated that way. We want to get good grades. We're here for the points. We're here for the good grade. Uh, they're motivated to, to do that, okay? But if we send out students who have grades that they didn't earn or that they got sort of some shifty way that they, short path that they um, created, um, eventually employers will say, oh, don't send us any more of those engineers from Ohio State. They all had good grades, but boy, they can't do the math. We had to let the last three go. Okay, so the reputation of our institution is about the people we send out there to represent us, and that's every one of our students currently enrolled and, and every one of our graduates. If they can't perform in the workplace, if what we see is uh, a stellar record but low performance and low knowledge and skill, we have a problem, okay? There's, a, there's an imbalance. There's not a validity to the grades and, and the uh, outcomes that students get when they get their degree. Also, when things happen, I show students when they come in, I talk to them about this scandal at North Carolina and say, wow, guess what's happening as a result of that? 3,100 students, people read that in the news and they say, well, accreditation problems are facing that university. Students don't understand what that means. That means if you have credits from a university that's not accredited, doesn't pass the standards of the people who evaluate universities, your credits aren't going to transfer anywhere. Nobody's going to want them. Employers aren't going to want to hire their, those graduates. So the upshot is, is that the people who did the work, and I'm sure at North Carolina, that's a great university, really. A lot of people did good work. But now there's this kind of shadow over that university. And students, some former students, have started a, uh, a class action suit against the university, saying, hey, I spent five years here, four years here. I did my studies. But now, Nobody really wants to take my degree seriously. That's what we're protecting, okay? And that's everybody's business. That's the student's business, that's the professor's business, <coughs> that's the university administration's business to keep the value of that degree high, to make sure that if you're a Buckeye, people say, yeah, send us more. Hire our students. Send your students to a higher <coughs> state because they're going to get a world-class education and they're going to go out and make us proud. That's what that rule in the Code of Student Conduct is saying, okay? Students don't really grasp it that way. They're really thinking about, oh my gosh, how do I meet the deadline? How do 
how do I get a grade in this course? How do I not fail the course? Oh, I have to get into med school. How do I get an A in this course? If I don't, the world will cave in. That, those are the pressures. It's expensive to go to school now. People have to go through fast, so they take lots of loads. All of these external pressures create that mindset that we have to every day talk to our students about, no, you're here to learn. And the second part of this uh, rule says subversion of the educational process. And I'm, I'm a faculty member in Germanic languages and literatures, uh, and I really have come to understand that when instructors ask a student to do a piece of work, okay, we're really asking them, we're going to look inside their head and see, what's your model of what we just taught you in class? If it's a homework assignment, if it's a paper, what do you understand? How did you understand this work? And student's goal is get the points. Get the right answer so I get the points. So our goals are not always in alignment. And, and <coughs> professors aren't always good at expressing that goal. I really want to know what you have done in this piece of work. I want to know, I want to be able to trust that what you're handing me is authentically your work. Okay, so if and as I said, I teach German. If I get an, a, an essay from a student and it comes back sort of looking like a Dave Speaker wrote it, uh, and the student says, well, yeah, I work with the tutor. Or I use Google Translate, <laughs> okay? And I say, well, okay, let's, let's think about that. If you work with the tutor who is a native speaker and um, all of a sudden I notice that the level of the writing in your paper isn't quite what you're doing in class, um, and the student will always say, well, I learned from working with that tutor. We learned. And I said, yes. But my purpose is to assess what you have learned, what you are doing with me in the class. I want you to learn with your tutor. But when your tutor helps you rewrite your paper and says, oh, say it this way, don't do it that way, let me help you here, what you're handing me is really whose paper is it? And if I'm trusting that what I'm getting is a piece of authentic work from you, the product of your cognition, and it really is, I don't know, your roommate's homework because you didn't have time to do it, but you want the points, or something you threw into, wrote in English and threw through into Google Translate and got it something out in German. It's not very good, and I'm not that stupid. I know what Google Translate does. But if I evaluate that, thinking that it is authentically your work, there's this mismatch again. It's not a valid assessment. And instructors need to know what the work is that they're assessing. And that's where tutors come in. Your job is really to get them there, to ask good questions, to work with them, perhaps not on that particular piece of work, but on the concepts that lead them to success, to independent success, when they are actually asked to perform that task or a, sim or a similar task. And to the extent that you are leading too much or saying, say, a student has to do a bibliography, an annotated bibliography, if you're doing the legwork and sending them uh, references, where's the part where they have to learn how to find those references? Okay? So you're slowly chipping away. You're aiding and abetting at the chipping away of, of something that we value at the university. So if you think about it that way, it's something that we all value that we want to protect. I think it's a, it's a good way to think about it. And when students come to you with their assignments, with, of course, their mentality, I want to, uh, you know, get a good grade on this, I, I need to pass this course, it's your job also to help them understand, well, what do you think the instructor wants to know from you when you do this piece of work? Trust me, we're not there to hand out M&Ms and just give a grade and you know, phone it in. <laughs> That's not a good use of our time. That's not why they're paying us the big bucks. We're here to teach. Most of us are invested in that. We're here to see our students succeed independently and go out in the world and make us proud. When we write that letter of recommendation, that's our reputation on the line. We're vouching for that person. So um, that's what we're here to talk about and uphold. Okay? Now, I've also trained TAs uh, for 23 years in my department, and I also see how TAs and, and 
by extension tutors become involved and that's what Gates was talking about. You become part of the process. You really want to see your, your charges succeed. And sometimes TAs also cross the line and, and they'll, you know, oh, we'll just change the curve a little bit or we'll do this for that student or this for that student. And that's not fair to everyone and it's crossing the line. And so you really have to think of yourself as maybe a parent who's doing tough love on your kids. Is you do the work, I'll help you structure it, I'll help you structure your study time, I'll lead you to the right place, but ultimately it's you who has to perform. And that's what Ohio State is looking for in its students and in its athletes and anyone that gets a degree from here. Okay? Um, I have some handouts for you. This one has uh, our, our one-sentence excerpt from the Code of Student Conduct, and it has ten, the hit parade, the most ten most common things, and one of them is knowingly providing or using unauthorized assistance. Okay? Those examples, as I said, people are way more creative than ten things. Those are the hit parade. Those are the most common things. But the theme goes through, it's getting something for nothing. <laughs> getting a grade that I didn't quite deserve by some means. Some of the means are more nefarious than others uh, and involve perhaps personal uh, lapses in integrity. But some of them are also things that students do not even knowing that what they're doing is academic misconduct. So I, I urge you to look at those examples there, especially plagiarism, which is number one. Uh, there's some, you know, Students think they're doing citation correctly. They think they're doing writing a paper correctly. Students nowadays think writing a paper is Googling something, collecting things, pulling, picking them off a tree, dumping it into a paper, put a transition sentence, do the next one, do the next one, do the next one. Okay? Writing is more than assembling a collage of other people's ideas and words. Writing means you've read those things. Writing means you've understood those things. And you can articulate them in your own words. And when, when instructors also, just on a homework assignment, will assign something, they'll say, you know, what's the answer to this question? Uh, they don't want you to just go find it in the book and dump it. They want the students to find it in the book, understand it, and show me that you understood by telling me in your own then we know that's become part of that student's cognitive structure, not something they recognize as possibly relevant that they probably won't remember tomorrow if all they do is cut and paste and dump it. Okay, so you want to get to that deep understanding of whatever it is that you understand and learn, and then they won't go wrong. Okay? Um, the second handout that I have is uh, it's a statement that was written uh, from the provost's office, and I think it's a really good encapsulation of our processes, what Ohio State's philosophy about academic integrity is, that you can share with your students. But I think uh, part of what students aren't understanding is the why. And that's what I try to do. The why. Why do we care? Why do we have these things in place? And your our most, our front line. You're protecting our academic integrity as well as the integrity of our sports programs. They have to go hand in hand. Thank you. Any questions?